Hey everyone, Rascal here. And Mama, welcome to another Egg Timer review. Today we're covering the DreamWorks film, Sinbad, Legend of the Seven Seas. Yes, and this is a movie Rascal has wanted to buy for so long, she finally got it. Yes. And we've covered just about all of the DreamWorks films on here, but this one is quite often overlooked. And this film follows the pirate Sinbad, not yes. the Matthew Mercer Sinbad. Right. Another Sinbad. <laughs> who goes on a quest to find a mystic book in order to save his friend's life. Yes. And before we start, be sure to like, subscribe, close the notification abilities on future podcasts and want to pause videos. Absolutely. And this had a stellar cast at the time. We had Brad Pitt as Sinbad, Michelle Pfeiffer as... Oh, well, how do they pronounce her name in it? She was a villainess. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute, how do they pronounce that? She was a villainess. And they also had um, Dennis Haysburg. Yes. And quite a few others. Well, someone else who played the friend. It just and it can't, Yeah, it's been so long now. So. Right. And this is one of those very early on DreamWorks movies where when you look at the case it doesn't even look like a DreamWorks movie right. it looks like it's a Disney movie right. and I kept thinking it was a Disney movie and Russell kept saying no it's DreamWorks and I kept saying it's Disney are you sure? No yeah. it's DreamWorks <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's because this was a time when they were actually trying out um, 2D movies for DreamWorks they did some uh, early CGI, they did a little bit of stop motion, then they tried 2D, and it looks like they made a few movies out of that. And then they stopped all together with that and just went straight to CGI, and that's what they've been doing for the anime movies pretty much from that point on. And this, they had, you know, this, El Dorado, Spirit, The Prince of Egypt, and Joseph King of Dreams. So Sinbad seemed to be maybe one of the last movies they did in that format. And that's unfortunately a good thing yeah because it looks like maybe for the better they went to a different style because if they had i think all the movies would have been much different or they would have made all different movies all together and they also went on to better stories this one was weak it really was to us, and yeah there have been so many versions of this story done live action and animated and even in anime yes but this one was one of the weakest ones that i've personally seen yeah and the reason why for us it was that the title says Legend of the Seven Seas. You don't really see that put into effect. There are no seven seas in this movie. It's one sea. <laughs> we go through one sea that's just a really big sea and then that's it. And it's supposed to be inferred that he's this big swashbuckling adventurer and there's all these dangerous things and creatures and villains and stuff and battles and things. But you barely see any of that in here. The only big one you do see is Michelle Pfeiffer. It's Eris. Yes. It's her name. Yeah. And she literally is huge. She makes herself Literally. Small, but she's literally huge. And she's the biggie, the biggest baddie. Right. And you don't see any others. You really don't. She had a few little minions that did some things for her and they were human. Yeah. But you, we were expecting grandiose you know, special, no special effects, grandiose, grandiose digital special effects mm -hmm. and storylines and things like we get in Maggie and in the Sinbad spinoff. Yeah. But in here, it was just kind of disappointing. And there, again, have been live action versions where they go all out and they add things like Jason and Argonauts and other stories that have taken place in Greek mythology. This didn't do it. Yeah. And... It was unfortunately for us disappointing to see that because we were expecting something really big. Because she's also the driving force behind the the plot of the movie going forward. And you're thinking, well, she does have some obstacles for him and his crew as it goes on. But the issue is that it doesn't get any bigger than what you've seen in other pirate movies. Pirates of the Caribbean had way more going on in one film or several films than this does in one film. Mm -hmm. And... It seems like at the time this was made, it was just supposed to have him kind of butting heads with the woman that snuck aboard to make sure he did the job. His best friend's fiance. Well, uh, he's cool to be fiance because he wants to marry her and then he tells her, well, I want you to say yes because you want to, not because you feel obligated. She was like, dude, um, um well, that thanks for trying. Uh, yeah, and we gotta get to that in a minute. Yeah. Um, so for here, 
she basically goes on board to make sure that he goes and gets the book because Eris has framed him made it look like he took out a guard and stole the book but she did it because so, she seems to get her powers from discord like on MLP so he agrees to go find the book because his friend was going to take his place for execution if he bought the book back then he'll be spared so that's pretty much the storyline of the movie and they go across the seas to go find the book and his friends technically future fiance sneaks on board the boat right you already know something's wrong here because why is this woman sneaking on the boat with his best friend and you can guess how this all turned yeah out. and please note that this was made in 99 and this was for kids. for kids so if you've seen the movie then you know how it ends and it's like this is i don't think this is the best thing to show to your <laughs> kids oh what are you teaching them here <laughs> now brad pitt as we mentioned is the voice of sinbad and Although I am a Brad Pitt fan, and I've seen him in many things I love him in, unfortunately, the Sinbad movie is not one of them. For me, he did not embody and have the presence to carry off a bigness for the character that was necessary for the movie to be big. Right. And, I mean, he did an okay job, but personally, I think... Someone else probably would have done a better job. I'm sorry, Brad Pitt. Again, I love you in many other things. This is actually one of the few things that I haven't cared for. It's it's fine. It it happens because he did do great in Megamind playing Metro Man. Absolutely. So so it looks like he did learn and improve since between movies. So for here, yeah, you are right. The voice cast didn't really stick out. Except for Michelle Pfeiffer. She was excellent as Aaron. Yeah. So aside from her, a voice cast was just okay. They were serviceable. They were passable. They tried. And the woman that sneaks aboard the ship, definitely gotta bring this up because this movie's been out a long time, so you know how this ends. Um, here's what I find off about how they set up this relationship towards it. The entire movie She's pretty much in charge. They want her on board because they finally have a woman on the ship. So they're not going to take kick her off. And it's just been a bunch of them uh, for years. So, of course, they are immediately warm up to her except for Sinbad. And clearly the whole thing is that she pretty much takes charge soon as she's on there. And at one point she does help when there's sirens and they, you know, fall into the trap. So, of course, she doesn't get uh, trapped in it. So at one point she does help. But it seems like she takes over majority of the story and the mission, even though it's called a Sinbad movie. Right. And throughout this movie, she has all these skills that are equal to Sinbad. And the whole joke is that they're butting heads because he's uh, at the time where they said how the guys treat the girls in the movies when they want to do more action and stuff. And they butt heads. She's called him everything. He's called him narcissist, sexist, all that. You know the drill. But then they get to a part of the movie where it looks like he failed his mission. And then she's suddenly really, really feeling bad that uh, this is going to happen to him. Well, of course you would because he really was trying to help his friend. The problem for me is that in the span of less than 90 minutes, she went from calling him out of his name, all sorts of names, yada, 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 treating him like not so great, then gets to here and suddenly she's all Sinbad, darling. Like, when did you switch like that? <laughs> time or the right way they need to watch some anime and then it would have been <laughs> right but here yeah it just doesn't work so if you're a fan of dreamworks and you really just want to see some of the early earlier works sorry guys then give it a try but if you really just want to see some of the better dreamworks movies unfortunately we say give this one a pass Fortunately, yeah. we couldn't because rascal bought it right <laughs> but now we've seen it and Unfortunately, we don't rate this very high. Right. Now, if you have seen Sinbad, and this is one of your favorite movies, or it's really high on your list, let us know in the comments and let us know why it works for you. Right. And we'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you haven't already, subscribe for updates and weekly videos on your favorite anime series, anime shows, and all things animation. Absolutely. And more anytime time reviews. Yes. So, thank you so much for watching. I'm Rascal Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a tuned day. Peace.